Birth Vegan here, and I just wanted to talk to you today about some of the things I've learned about KSP2 that's coming up in 2020. I know a lot of other YouTubers, uh, namely Scott Manley, Matt Lown, and uh, those other YouTubers who have huge Kerbal followings and are known as the uh, stalwarts of Kerbal, perhaps the uh, the fathers of YouTube Kerbal. <laughs> they have covered many of the aspects of the new game, so I'm not going to rehash all of the things that they've already said, but I did want to talk a little bit about the things that I read about in a couple of articles in PC Gamer with one of the Star Theory creators, the creative director, in fact, Nate Simpson. Primarily, the things I wanted to talk about in this video are about the colonies that we can establish in Kerbal Space Program 2. Apparently, colonies are going to be established via portable modules that are delivered and deployed on celestial bodies, or in space, maybe? They do mention a couple of times in the article that a colony can be built in orbit, but most of the references to colonies are on planetary bodies. So it's a little bit still in the air about whether or not you can have an orbital colony, but it sounds like maybe that is a possibility. So something interesting about colonies, as they grow, they build new modules. Like other unattended Kerbals in the original KSP, the Kerbal colonies won't dissipate or suffer while unattended. They did go out of their way to mention it's not going to be a colony simulator. You don't have to manage the colony itself. You do other things and then you come back and add to the colony at any time. The colony builder itself seems that it's going to function similar to the vehicle builder and it's called the Building Assembly Editor, or Bay, <laughs> which I think is hilarious and right on key with other Kerbal plays on words. As the colony progresses, new parts will become available. Like the vehicle assembly building, once you build the colony, you launch it, and the surrounding gravity and physics kick in, allowing for your typical Kerbal-esque disasters. Also of note, they mentioned that a new terrain system unlocks a huge amount of potential variation in the colony types. They mentioned specific mountain ranges, canyons, craters, things of that nature. The parts selection begins with the parts that are brought to the planet via a ship. As the population of the colony grows, new kinds of parts unlock. At some point, imported resources can also fabricate new modules on the site. One of the modules you can build is an actual VAB, a vehicle assembly building, which can then build new vessels from the colony to then send out into space, which I think will be really beneficial as it pertains to interstellar travel because it'll be much easier to, say, build a large ship on Minmus and then launch that ship without having to fight a lot of gravity. Colony growth is the central mechanic governing what the colony is capable of. However, it won't be tied to the passage of time. Rather, it will be based on achieving milestones within the game and trigger a Kerbal baby boom. Nate Simpson is quoted as saying, When you do something of note in the game, people celebrate by multiplying. The milestones are not revealed in the articles, but I'm looking forward to see this mechanic come to life. So I hope you enjoy this little glimpse into the colony systems as I could glean from the articles in PC Gamer uh, with Nate Simpson. I will link to those articles in the description below, so be sure and check them out for yourself. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you excited about the Colony Builders? I'm pretty excited about it. Actually, it's probably one of my uh, most looked forward to aspects of KSP2, and that is the Colony Builder. So it is definitely one of the things that I'm looking forward to, and I hope you are as well. So I know a lot of the other YouTubers and people on Reddit and people on the forums and just everywhere are always saying how they are cautiously optimistic about the release of KSP. I'm not. I'm not cautiously optimistic at all. I am 100% completely optimistic that the developers at Star Theory are going to do a fantastic job with the base game that, that Squad gave us in KSP 1. I feel like they're all very uh, big fans of KSP 1 and they, they know the 
the general feeling that GSP delivers as a game. And I think they are working towards doing the exact same thing, only better with KSP2. So I am 100% fully optimistic that we are going to get exactly what we want with KSP2. Now, that being said, what happens if it, uh, if it falls flat on its face? Well, I'll be disappointed. But you know what? Disappointment don't kill you. So there you go. I'm optimistic. I'm excited. And I'm looking forward to 2020 if only to play KSP2 and other games. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.